snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. Hey, what's up everybody? Marcos Villegas here in Indio, California. Huge surprise! Former heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield, gracing us with his uh, presence here. Uh, Evander, uh, two uh, quick questions for you. Uh, one, Andy Ruiz uh, fought uh, Anthony Joshua in a fight that uh, disappointed a lot of uh, Andy Ruiz fans because of the shape that he came in. What did you make overall uh, of the fight and how it played out? Well, uh, you know, I, th I, th I think that um, he and the point of winning the first fight, he thought that was it. Uh, and you know, you, I'm telling you, when you become a champion, you got to work even harder because everybody go back and look at the fight and see, see what mistake they make and they make adjustment. And I think it was probably overwhelming for him because you know, then nobody ever think he was gonna beat him and he became, and but, even becoming the heavyweight champion of the world, so many people are talking to you. Everybody want to talk to you, and all of a sudden you forget about what got you there, training. And so I, I, I truly believe that it'll show if he go back and work hard and make the adjustment, and you come back and be it a second time. You can, I'm telling you, that's a part of life. What did you make overall of the fight? I know uh, Joshua got a lot of... Um a lot of negative feedback by the way he fought. The people felt that he fought too dis defensively in the fight. Well, you know, he did what was necessary to win. I'm telling you know, I'm, but it's supposed to be the champion. You know, when you're the champ, if ain't nobody doing that, it usually go to the champ. But I, I, I think that when when you don't you, when you don't have discipline about yourself, and I then and I think it kind of hurt the sport altogether. When you don't have discipline about yourself, discipline is that you know that you be supposed to be a certain weight, then you at that certain weight. You do the things that's necessary to be the very best. When he came in at the 284 that he did, Andy Ruiz, and when you looked at the fight, did you think like, oh man, how, how did this guy come in at this weight? Well, you know, I'm, when people get distracted, and you know, and, and a lot of time when you at heavyweight, you ain't did it. That's, you're a big guy. You know, but uh, unfortunately, you're not able to be at your very best, and it costs you. Is that more of people tugging in? Is that a discipline thing, or is it other factors, or is it everything all accumulating at once? Well, well, you know, uh, you know, you know, I'm to the people that trained him, the first, and then these people. He used to, and he used to be with them all the time. And, and now you become the heavyweight champion of the world, everybody calling you, you always busy, you always doing this, and, and, and you take for granted, you're a star. Well, okay then, but well, you're a fighter first before you're a star. So you have to stick to your game plan. One of the most important things in life is, is that you, you, you got to know how you got there. You got there because you work. The day that you stop working, you're not going to be it. He's switching trainers now. He got rid of the, the old trainer, and now he's in search for a new trainer. There's a lot of rumors that maybe Teddy Atlas would, would be into it. What do you make of a fighter doing that, to switching trainers because of a loss like that? Well, I, I, I think, first of all, you come back to yourself. You ask yourself, what did you do wrong before you go change anybody else? Uh, because, you know, I'm like, you know, I, 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 I sparred with him when I was 19 years old. And that guy was on me like butter on rice. And I was like, to, and I was like, and I was, I was, oh, I said, man, he, he, he won't stop. Like this, and I'm trying to hit him and all this. I'm saying, and so I knew he was a good fighter. And the day that he fought, and when he fought, uh, uh, the, uh, what, uh, what is it, Anthony Joshua, the day that he fought him, I said, oh, he picked the wrong guy. And I, and I told all my friends, I said, he picked the wrong guy. That guy looked like he can't fight. He fight, he great, and he beat him. And but you know, but this the same thing that you have to do the second time too. Okay, the guy bagging back. So what they got to do with it? You ain't shaping up to get him. I'm saying so. You know, I I, I think in life it'll show you that 
we all as people make mistakes. But that don't mean that we can't correct them. So he just need to go in and correct them. Would you want to see a third fight? Would, would you be interested in it, given how the second one played out? Well, of course I'm uh, of course he want to. Uh, no, would you want to see one? Of course, why not? Because that's, you know, I'm telling you, when we make mistakes, it shows something about our character. So, now, everybody make mistakes. Ain't nobody in this world don't make mistakes, but it's correct them. Can you correct it? And it, it, you, you're more stronger to correct your mistake than, than to make one. So if he comes back to this third one, do you favor him in a fight against Joshua, uh, given now that we have two fights? Well, you know, my whole thing, I, it's not about me favoring. It's about what he do. That's true. Um, because you know what? You know, my mama didn't even fight. But my mama always told me, she said, let me tell you something. When you, when you practice hard and you do real well in practice, this is what the people going to see. It's how you practice. I'm telling you, you know, don't nobody, ain't nobody watching you practice and stuff like this. Then everybody comes to the fight. You draw all these people to the fight, and you ain't even doing everything that was necessary. You just, you ain't just disappointing yourself. You disappoint them. If they expecting you to be this great person you was. I said so. The, the, the art of life, uh, the art of life in boxing. You fight like you practice. If you practice hard, you go fight hard. Practice hard and the fight will be easy. That's what that's for time and time again. Evander, uh, last one. Uh, Wilder and Fury, they're going into a rematch. A lot of anticipation for that fight. Break it down. How do you see it happening? Because a lot of people have it as a 50-50 fight. Well, I, I, you, you would say 50-50 fight because, uh, of course, uh, uh, Deontay, Deontay, he can... He the one that at any given time he throw that right hand he can he can knock you out, but uh, but uh, Tyson Fury, it's a clever fighter. He's a good fighter. Got longer arms and stuff like that, and and he got a he got an awkward style that can make adjustment. Now is what guy to, what's guy gonna fight his fight like this? And and I think at any given time. At the end of the given time, Deontay can, can get you out with one shot. Now, Tyson Fury going to take a, he gonna take him a lot of shots to get you out. He ain't going to get you out with one. He's going to take a lot of shots to get you out. And so I think, I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult for him. Who do you see ultimately winning, in your opinion? Well, you know, the guy that fight is fight. Now, you know, everybody, you know, everybody can come up with excuses. Excuses for everybody. The, the, but the man that don't make excuses is the one that always usually wins. No, I'm curious just to get to your final like perspective on this. A lot of people have said that Deontay Wilder is the most devastating puncher in all of history, in all of heavyweight history. You were in the ring with some devastating punchers, Mike Tyson being one of them. What do you make of that? Do you feel that he is the biggest puncher in history? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about, when you talk about boxing, you talk about what era that a fighter's in. I say Deontay in an era where that it's not a lot of great fighters there, but it's not his fault. He didn't start boxing until he was 19 years old. You know, like people think, when people start talking. I say, look, I started boxing at the age of eight. At the age of eight years old, I was 65 pounds. Of course, I got a lot of skills. I said, but Deontay, he started at 19 years old, and from a 19 year old to get in there and beat all them guys, I'm telling he's great. And so it, it, when, it, when it all come down, I think when it come down to confidence, he got more confidence than all the fighters. And he tend to win because he got very confident in the things that he know. Power-wise, though, is he the most explosive you've seen? Or do you think there's been others more explosive? Because people are saying that it's the most explosive puncher, pound for pound, ever. Well, yeah, he is. I'm, but he, he's the tallest fighter. I'm telling you, like, they ain't never had a a tall guy like him hit guys. I'm saying, you know, when you, you talk about devastating punching, I say, you know, that's no doubt. I'm thinking, you know, Mike Tyson was a good, a good puncher, but he'll get, at any given time, he'll get you out of there. I'm telling and, and, and you know, and you got to give him credit for who he is. But you can't, you can't go and say, is he the strongest one? Because he ain't fought nobody who, his height, and well, then again, he, 
Tyson. He, Tyson Fury is his height. And so, but you know, but there ain't no big guy can throw it like him. I'm like, the one, two, you better believe. He knows that he do that real well, and he going to hit you that one, two. You probably aren't going to be out of there if he catch you that one, two. The weird thing, he's like a heavyweight Hearns because he's like tall and lanky, but he just has that bomb in his right hand. Well, when you went, when, yeah, he, I'm telling I'm telling you know, it take a lot of experience to do that. I mean, in that short period of time, he had learned how to do it. And so it's going to be, it's going to lights out. Evander, it's so great to catch up with you and talk to you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Marcos Viegas here in Indio, California with the former heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield.